Hey guys, what's up? Cardmaster Phoenix here. Hey guys, in our card fight Vanguard area video. This time it's going to be my Royal Paladin standard format Alfred deck against my opponent's Nesquik's Battle Razor uh, deck. Uh, well, just that's basically what it is. Battle Razor deck. Right, we're just going to put these down at the bottom. I'm going to draw from the top this time because that's what a amazing comments are pointed out to me. So thank you, whoever you are. Let me say I forgot your name. That was some Pokemon profile picture. Thank you, whoever you are. Um, I appreciate you informing me of that. And I commented on it too. Um, we'll go heads. I went on heads, so we'll go first. It's our turn. Reverse draw. And we'll ride Pongle on top of Grime. Um, skill will then allow us to draw one card from our deck, and with that, we shall end our turn. Now, I used to play, like, I've, I've been in card fight Vanguard area for a long, long time. Like, I started back in, like, 2014, right? And, well, I mean, that's what, at least that's what I think. I, it it could have been, it could have been sooner. I mean... I just remember, I vividly remember one fight against this guy in 2014. Um, but anyway, that doesn't really matter. I'll explain it after this fight because I'll consider this. So, it's going to swing 16 at the Vanguard. We're just going to take this to the face. It's going to damage the Pongle. That's a sad life. He's going to swing 9 out of 8. Uh, we'll take this. Oh, God. Uh, but yeah. Um, he's actually really good. I'm not sure if I've ever beaten him, but of course now it's G-Format. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, it, that was back in G-Format. Now, of course, it is a, um, now, of course, it's, well, through a regular format to G, and now it's a completely new format, standard, so I might have a chance at actually beating him now. But anyway, we'll just see. So it's going to be my turn now. I stand and draw and ride the Vanguard, hide over the Pane. I just go to Counterblast 1. Search deck and superior call a copy of Pongle from the deck. Pongle skill then activates after shuffling the deck. So we'll charge one card. If it happens to be a trigger unit, he gains 5,000 power. It was, in fact, a trigger unit, so he gains 5,000 power to compensate for the loss of a trigger. And then we'll go to the main phase and into the battle phase. Have Pongo support Connie with her Connie's skill. There's a 3,000 power since it's being boosted. she's being boosted by High Beast. And we'll attack the Thermy guy. He's going to regard to a draw to a check. Alfred early. He's going to damage Jet Riser. And we'll end their turn. And I should probably pronounce Jet Riser, but I'm going to pronounce it Jet Riser. He's going to have Howard Riser custom and we'll battle Riser back. And then you are going to swing 16 thousand and Vanguard. Riser Riser custom and we'll battle Riser back. And then you're going to swing 16,000 at the Vanguard. We'll take it. And... We get the damage check to bring a good luck up on it, which will give the 10,000 power and critical to the Vanguard. And he's going to swing 15 out of 20, and we'll no guard this, because it doesn't hit without a trigger. And of course, he gets the front trigger. 10,000 power to the Vanguard, and it hits. Damage trigger check, no trigger. And the damage sounds 4 to 1. Okay. It's going to counter blast 1 now. And stand one of your other rear guards. Okay, so it's just gonna stand an extra it's gonna make an extra attack. Okay, so we'll just take this. Let me show a check. No trigger. And that's going to be my turn. I shall stand and draw. I'll ride the Vanguard, King of Knights Alfred. With that, I shall now use the force gift marker. Giving 10,000 power to the rear guard slot here. Go into the main phase and use the King Knight Alfred skill. Can I blast in one to search my deck and spear called Blaster Blade? My deck's in the shuffled. And then I will use his Alfred skill. Give Blaster Blade 5,000 power. Alfred skill gives him 10,000 power. And Blaster Blade Skill now goes live. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. To retire Riser Custom in the front. 
And then I call Cam to Alfred once again. No. Then I call Alfred early. Or, no, I'll just call Cam Knight to Alfred again. And then go into my battle phase and then the Cam Knight to Alfred attack high powered racer custom. Easily could easily guard this but might just take the damage anyway. Power's long since ended, so. He's thinking about it. Takes it. Support by Pongle. Can that Jalfred attacks the Vanguard? He's gonna know Bardo, of course. Second Twin Drive, first check. No shitter. Second check. Critical shitter. 10,000 Powder Blaster Blade, triple on the Vanguard. He's gonna check for two damage triggers now. First check is a critical trigger, which will give everything to the Vanguard, so it's a second, and he'll do it again. Now Blaster Blade will attack the Vanguard. And he'll take it as well. And it's another critical trigger. Again, once again, all to the Vanguard. And that's the end of my turn to start of his. Then draw. That's Perfect Riser. And gets a Excel Gift Marker, which he'll use to call Burst Riser twice. And High Power Riser custom once. Use that. Bring back Battle Riser. Calls down Terrible Riser. He's going for the finish here. Because he sees that there's an opening with my weak hand. 17,000 so 17, Blast of Blade will take it. I'm going to spend 19,000 at the Vanguard, will guard that attack with High Dog Breeder Akane. And, oh wait, that's not 10,000, I'm sorry. We'll guard that attack with Flogal. Then going to swing 15,000 at the Vanguard, I take it. No? No, we're gonna swing 17,000 at the Vanguard. Skill activate the counter blast 1, soul blast 1, to. No, counter blast 2. And then stand. No, counter charge 1. And then. One of your units gains 5,000 power. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Uh, two of the rear guards in the front row stand, so it's gonna be this column. Just from 17 at the vanguard. We shall guard with... High Operator Akane, that's one. This is dangerous, gonna get Jet Riser and High Power Riser custom. Okay. Just from 22 at the vanguard, we'll guard that with... Elaine. Then, Burst Riser will attack the Vanguard with support from Riser Custom. We'll guard that with Flash Shield Assault. Flash Shield Assault, assault Skill. Assault Skill will allow us to discard Alfred early to block that attack. Then, with support from Battle Riser, High Powered Riser Custom will attack the Vanguard once more. And we'll once again guard that attack with Flash Shield Assault and discard the King of Knights Alfred to nullify the attack. And now it's the end of his turn and the start of mine. Stand and draw. Perfect, actually. We'll ride the Vanguard, King of Knights, Alfred. And use it and acquire the Force Gift Marker, which we'll apply here. Now it's all about this push, right? Uh, he just knows it's GG. He doesn't have enough. Because even if he had an, we'll just say he has a nullify in hand, which I don't even think he does. If he had a nullify, he'd have to get rid of half his hand just between the nullify and the discard, which would have blocked the vanguard or some attack. We'll just say he uses it intelligently and blocks the vanguard. That's still two different attacks he'd use, and and on top of that, I could have either called Blaster Blade or Superior called him anyway. I would have retired one of them. I mean, like you said, basically GG. He went way too balls deep on that last turn. Um, I mean, he just dove in, and, um, he kind of got punished for it, you know? Um, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the deck profile now. GG to Nesquik, uh, for being, shoutouts to Nesquik, by the way, for being an amazing friend, and, uh, delicious milk, I'm kidding. No, but for real, dude. 
the uh, nice quick move is amazing. Anyway, we'll go to uh, first. Let's just go and just demonstrate. So first of all, the Christmas trees removed, long screen, all these new kind of like um these new areas have been added. This is the standard room. This is the new the new kind of loading room, which is different, but whatever. And we got uh, the snow field, which we made the card shop. And of course, now we have the ice palace, which is the same as usual. It's odd, though, because there's only four players here. Um, which is kind of, you know, three excluding me, but, you know, it's kind of weird. But anyway, we'll go over the deck profile. So, we have here. For our starting Vanguard, we're of course running one grind because I don't believe in running Gyro. It's just it's such a bad card to be honest. And for the trigger lineup, it's just the same as pretty much every deck is nowadays, which eight crit, four draw, four heal. So you have four copies of Bring Your Good Luck Abana, four copies of Flogal, four copies of Flash Shield Assault, and four copies of Deep Shield Made in the Lane. Uh, I shouldn't really have to explain this, it's just the best real lineup that's gonna be universal across every deck the list you'll ever see. So yeah, um, I mean, that's what it is though. Moving on to the grade ones, okay. There's 20 of them, which is kind of a lot. No, I'm sorry, there's only 16 though, I'm sorry. Uh, there's two copies, of course, of Ost by Falcon. This is kind of like my personal tech for the deck. I don't see that many people wanting him, but I really like using him. Just because 10k to a column is amazing. Because when you think about it, Excel only gives it, Excel is only to a single, like, it's basically like mi mimics Excel to an extent. Because Excel gives 10,000 power and an extra, in an extra regard circle to that specific regard circle. Okay. What this does is it allows me to kind of mimic that in a sense by giving 10,000 power total. But just divided between two units in the column. And all it requires is a counter blast and rest in the unit, which you'll never use for attacking anyway. And honestly, even for boosting, it'd be more useful just to give two units. Like, you're never really going to use this unit for boosting or anything other than his ability, which is the only reason I'm running him. And it's also why I'm running him at such a low number, just because I don't want to see him that often. Except for maybe early game and sometimes mid game. It kind of falls off late game, but it's whatever. And on the flip side of that coin, we have two copies of Mirror Biru, who I always want to see early game, and never mid to late game. Um, because what it does is, Mirror Biru, as continuous skill on the Vanguard Circle, when supporting the Vanguard Circle, well, just in the same column as him, as the Vanguard, this unit gains 5,000 power, so it's a 12k boost to the Vanguard, which is amazing. And, again, it's just awesome. Um, it's so worth the 10k shield you're losing. Anyway, moving on, we have the four copies of Night Squire Allen, the, I guess, ideal ride target, because you don't want to be riding anything else, really. Don't want to be riding these, don't want to be riding these. This is for columns, this is for your grade 2, which we'll get into later. Um, but Night Squire Allen is really just your ideal ride, mid one ride target. Plus, the skill isn't that amazing, but it's whatever. Uh, it just everybody runs him because why not? So I don't know if I check one place cost kind of last one. Call up to one card with a grade less than that that or equal to your Vanguard demand. And if you call a draw a card in this unit gains three thousand power until the end of that turn. So he becomes an eleven K attacker. You get a free draw to replace the card you just called. And that's basically the extent of it. Which is very nice, I will admit, but I never really use up like Admittedly, okay, I don't have much experience with this deck because I'm much more of a Kagero fan you know, and a player. Like that's my serious deck. But from the experience I've played, from the games I played and the experience I've had with this deck, I've never once used this ability. Which maybe just me making misplays, but in the situations in which I've been encountering, I made an executive decision to not use this ability because. I know even a single counter blast may not seem like a lot, but every counter blast counts. You never want to be in a situation where you could have won because, but you lost instead because you used a counter blast that you shouldn't have. That's basically, that's basically the deal. 
what the deal here is. So, anyway, moving on, I have four copies of Little Sage Marin. This is your column creator. So, auto on the rearguard circle once a turn. When your other rearguard is placed in the same column as this unit, cost, counter blast one, draw a card, and this unit gains 3,000 power until the end of the turn. It's basically what Knight Squire Allen does. I mean, technically, it's more, more restricted, but I like it slightly more. Um, I mean, it's whatever, but I just like it slightly more. Because I've actually used her skill on multiple occasions, and just not Allen's for some reason. Which is actually weird, given the context that it's restricted to once a turn, but it's whatever. It's just how I prefer to use the card. Um... Because when you think about it, the effect space is the same, but whatever. I just use Marin more often than I do Squire Allen. Anyway, moving on, we have the four copies of Pongle as our final grade one, just because it's there since you're running Akane in the grade two lineup. If, when you're not running Akane, which you almost always will be, then I, you don't have to run Pongle, obviously. But it's just who else would you run? But anyway, uh, his skills are on the robot circle in this place. If you're running unit in the same column as this unit, which just like Marin, ha it. The card text d dictates that there has to be a pre-existing unit in the column before you call it. Like, there has to be a unit before this unit in which you call it. And then, uh, Solar Charge 1. And then, if the Solar Charge card is a trigger unit, as you saw in the gameplay, this unit gains 5,000 power until end of turn. So, it's just a nice little, what was that, 26k boost when boosting Akane. So, that's amazing. Anyway. Because the 13 from the, tr the the 13 total, but because it's base 8 and 5 from the trigger, on top of the 10 from base of Akane, makes it 23, 26 when you include her skill, so that's it. Then we to the grade 2s. And I, I know a lot of people play Ringal. Um, I don't. It's, I know it's like weird, because a lot, a lot, a lot of people play Ringal. I just... Personally, don't, but whatever. Moving on. I'm playing... And, okay, this is probably where some of my problems come from. Um, I on, I'm only running eight grade twos. I'm running four copies of Blaster Blade, who's your ideal grade one right target. I mean, I'm sorry, grade two right target. And that's evidenced by the fact that he has two different Vanguard skills. Continuous in the Vanguard Circle. If you have four or more rear guards... This unit gains plus one critical. So just going critical for having a basically full field is amazing. And auto on the Vanguard Guard or Rear Guard Circle in place. Cost, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's Rear Guards in the front row and retire it. Doesn't matter if it's if it's greater, greater than yours. Doesn't matter. Just retires it as long as it's in the front row. It doesn't have to be more. It doesn't have to be less. It just retires it. it doesn't even have to be a certain grade. It just It's a free retire, basically. And this is one of the very few cards that actually will have you Soul Blast. Because, admittedly, what sense would that make when you're trying to save up for Soul Saver, which is kind of like the big finisher here? You can compare it to, like, the Deer in OTT right now. Hang on, my dog's running out. Hang on. It's okay, B. Hang on, wait, wait. Wait, wait, puppy. Wait. Wait. Wait, that's, that's gonna hurt if you jump right there, okay? It's top of my desk. Come on. Yeah, good girl. Good girl, yeah, he's adorable. Once again, go back to, I knew it, you're adorable, you really are. You seem the most adorable puppy I've ever seen in my entire life, okay? But can I please go back to my video? What do you mean, no? I swear I'm gonna have to make a video, uh, oh, it's just separately from my dog, I mean, she's so awesome. She's no way to be, I know, I love her. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Anyway, um, what's this? Okay, never see that, but anyway. Some people are on, not this card, some, I've seen like two people run this. I've seen some people run this. I've seen some people run, uh, this guy, no. Who is it there? Yeah, this guy. But I just prefer to run uh, these two. Um, and then the four copies of High Dog Red Arcane for the reasons I explained earlier. Automatic on the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle when placed. Cost counter plus one. Shoot deck for Inshapiro for Call Pongle. 
shelf your deck, and that triggers Pongo skill. And the turn that is boosted by High Beast, which also counts by Mirabiru, because Mirabiru is also High Beast. This unit gains 3,000 power. So that's awesome, because even if you're not, you know, technically doing the right combo with it and Pongo and her, and Pongo, I want to say it, technically you're still getting the power increase that you need. Anyway, we want to the grade 3 lineup. That's it for the grade 2s. We're running 9 grade 3s. Now, first off, the one copy of Soul Saver Dragon. I'm only making him a one off because I don't have space for anything else, really. Um, and I don't feel like cutting anything else either. But it's just a really good finisher. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. For the one copy of this card that I have in my entire deck, I see him fairly often. Maybe it's just RNG, but really, I see him a lot. Anyway, uh, that's probably due to all the deck finning that this deck does, but still, it's amazing. That I see him. His skill is auto on the Vanguard Circle, cost all blast 5. Your entire field gains 15,000 power until end of turn. To check, your entire field gets free, for a free trigger. Well, a fr well, better than a free trigger, to be honest, but whatever. Um, and then auto on the Vanguard Circle when it attacks, you may so, so charge 1. Um, just help build up the soul. This is really only your finisher, because you're not going to use it more than once, of course, but whatever. Uh, four copies of the King of Knights Alfred. I've seen some Vanguard ponder if this is actually a good card, when there are cards like <coughs> Alfred Early that exist. Because this, I mean, uh, this Alfred Early in Standard is just not good, I'm sorry. The fact that it has to be from Hand or Soul... When, in more often than not cases, you're just gonna have it in your deck, so damage zone somewhere, it's just not good, anyway. He's got two skills, actually, and they're in a circle on turn, cost 10 plus 1, search your deck in superior, call it to 1, blast the blade, and it gains 5,000 pounds on the turn, shuffle your deck, then continuous on the vanguard circle during your turn. If you have a blast the blade in the vanguard circle, which you will automatically have, it's what the condition for after using the skill, this unit gets 10,000 power. So, what I love to do is I love to use his skill, roll first right into him, use the imaginary force gift marker, and apply it to whatever column I'm going to call him into, and then call Blaster Blade with the skill of Alfred. That way, he, with Blaster Blade's automatic, like, base 10k, he automatically doubles that to 20 because of the force gift marker, and on top of that, Alfred gives him another 5k, so it's... Glass of Blade himself being 25k, not even including anything he might be supported by, which can easily get him up to like over 30,000, thir like 33, 34,000 to be exact, I believe it's 33. Um, and then this guy also gets a free imaginary gift to marker too because it's uh, it's 10,000 power, so why wouldn't you know? Anyway. Um, other than that, the only other card running in this deck is the four copies of Alfred Early. Um, I totally understand why people don't play Alfred Early. A, it's just a, honestly, it's just kind of a bad card in standard. And it's not even that good-ish. I mean, I don't want to just, like, contrary to what I just said, I don't, I really don't like saying cards are bad. I don't. I, I, I know, I know, I know I just contradicted myself, but I, I, I really don't. But this card is, it, it'd be so much better. It'd be so much better if it allowed to call from deck. But it, I just, like, with all the deck filtering, I just don't, that this deck already has, why not just give it that extra bit of consistency? But, no, no, guess not. I don't know. It's just sad. Anyway, uh, auto on the ring, check one place, cost 10 plus one, call it to one blaster blade from your, Hand or or soul to real circle, it gains ten thousand power until in the turn, and if you call it draw a card. Um I mean it's an amazing it's an amazing card if you have it in hand or soul. You just more often than not won't, so that's the sad part. But anyway, um this is usually where people would cut out Alfred early for more copies of Soul Saver or another alternate grade two or just something else like that. Because my, I, the two biggest problems I have with this deck is I never pull grade two and have too many grade threes. Because nine grade threes is a lot. Like you've, like you've seen 
how many grade threes I would have in a hand at once, you know, when I was, uh, in that fight that's, that showed up on, on video before the deck profile, it's just insane, but anyway, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this video, guys, thank you so much for watching, I've been your host, Cardmaster Phoenix, signing out, see you guys next time, have a good one.